First of all, I want to thank you for letting me be on your podcast. And I want to let you know that this is my official first podcast ever. What? Yeah. I know, believe it or not. This is crazy to me. I had many interviews with the LA Times, LA Weekly, yeah. I mean, all these other magazines, but this is the first time I've been asked to do a podcast. Hello, and welcome to Here in LA, Los Feliz Edition. Today, we talk with maybe the most famous person in LA movie theater history, Victor Martinez epic manager. If you are one of the few unaware of Victor, well, he is the manager of the Vista Theater where Sunset and Hollywood collide. There, he is best known for dressing up in costumes as he takes your ticket. But as you will hear in this interview, he does a whole lot more than just that. We will learn how he got the gig, where he fought up uh, dressing up in costumes, his relationship with his new boss, Mr. Quentin Tarantino, and what's he doing now while the Vista is being remodeled. Jordan gives this episode a special thumbs up, and so I really recommend that you pop some popcorn and enjoy our chat with Victor, Epic Manager. Okay, here I am in beautiful Los Feliz, at the Los Feliz Three, with Victor Martinez, the world famous. Oh my God! The Los Angeles famous. <laughs> You're too kind because I just consider myself an, a good popcorn maker, and that's how people remember me. You know. You are. You are. Well, people do remember you. People do know you as the manager of the. Vista Theater. Yes, and I love it because, you know, 90% of the people don't even know my name. All they know is that there's this great manager at the door <laughs> greeting people, and uh, he's been there for a long time. How long have you been there? They hired me when I was in my diapers. It's 1988. 33 years. Yes. Wow! <laughs> Do you remember what movie you were showing? Uh... Uh, Cinema Paradiso. What a great movie. Yeah, that's the story of my life. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You were you, you, were you a little kid who was in uh, I was the, 18. But were you 18 the first time you were in a projection yes. room? Yes. Yes. That was my first time at the projection at the Vista. What uh inspired you to apply for that job? I I was just hanging out at home, you know, I was a teenager, so I was just uh, focused on learning English, you know, I still have my Guatemalan accent. Is that where Never you're from, Guatemala? It. Yes, I'm from Guatemala, uh -huh. and I was just hanging out at home, and uh, I remember my brother uh, had a lot of friends, and he, you know, tap on my shoulder, because I was listening to the music, and he's like, hey, I, do you want a job? And I'm like, sure, I said, let's, let's do it, and I just got up, and I didn't even know where I was going. And then as as we got closer to the building, I said, oh, uh, are we going to the Vista Theater? Because when I saw that, um, I thought to myself, man, I think this is meant to be because the first day I arrived to America, my parents went to pick me up at the airport and they said, son, uh, would you like to eat something? I said, yeah, I would love uh, McDonald's because in Guatemala, you only eat McDonald's for your birthday. So it was a celebration. I had just arrived to America, and I remember they drove me to Sunset Boulevard to the McDonald's that is right there. And then the first day in America, I look over to my right, and there's the Vista. I, and, and I didn't know English back then, so I remember Vista real clearly. <laughs> and it just stamped in my head, you know. And, and then they took me to school, and... I remember for the first six months, I was very homesick oh. because I, I miss my country, you know. But little by little, you know, I started turning American. <laughs> and then, you know, and then uh, four years later, here I am walking to apply to uh, the Vista Theater. And I remember the manager at the time, his name was uh, Doug Indicott. He blessed that man. He's like my father because he's the one that uh, gave me an opportunity as an immigrant to have a job at the Vista, and thanks to him, I'm still here. That what what a great story. 
Oh, thank you. So, so this was your friend was working at the Vista. Yes, well, my my well, my brother and my my friend, uh, they both. Um, uh, well, uh, his friend was working at the Vista, and then he told my brother that they were looking for workers. So he want my brother wanted to apply, and then he asked me if I wanted to join, and that's how the three of us ended up working there. Do you remember how much money you were making in 1988? Yes. I was making $3.11 an hour. It was awesome. <laughs> I, that was the most money I ever had. Yeah. How did your parents get to L.A. before you did? Well, they uh, they were immigrants themselves. And I have to give all the credit to my mother because she's always been an entrepreneur. So she, uh, we were, you know, we, we were living in Guatemala and she's like, you know what, we got to do something. So she came to America, worked her ass off for, you know, four years. And then uh, she went back to get us. And that's so great. Yeah. So in 1988, it wasn't easy for people to emigrate. No, from, actually Guatemala. in Guatemala, um, I was, you know, turning 14 and my mom was so worried that, uh, there was a revolution going on in Guatemala, and I was getting old enough to be drafted in the army in Guatemala because uh, you have to be, uh, well, over there is mandatory. Yeah. Okay. So my mom was in a big hurry to go get me because she was so worried that the army was going to pick me up, and there was a revolution going on. So thanks to her, I ended up being a popcorn maker. <laughs> You know, you, you've mentioned that a few times. Let's get to it. <laughs> what is the secret of making good popcorn? Well, first, passion, you know. And then, of course, you know, you cannot burn it. So you have to, you know, really watch it, keep an eye on it, because there's nothing better than freshly popped, hot popcorn falling out of the kettle. It's kind of like going to a carnival and you're making the um, cotton men, making the cotton. Cotton candy. Yeah, and you know, and you gotta eat it fresh, you know? Yeah. If you take it home, then it's all flat, and <laughs> even though popcorn does keep for a few days if you wanna save it, yeah. but I'm just saying that the fun of making popcorn is when you're there watching it fall from the kettle, and that's what a lot of theaters uh, miss out on because they have these giant, heaters that uh, they pre-pop the popcorn and they have it there for the crowds and they forget that the fun of you know going to a movie theater is to see the popcorn falling especially if you have kids you know it's you, you know you you gotta have that experience where you see all the popcorn falling so to me that that's the secret of our, our success at the theater because we have the classic popcorn machines and when people come they they want to hear the popcorn falling out of the kettle and they want to see it yeah uh okay and smell it of course the, yeah the know, smell of popcorn i can still i can smell it now it's, yeah. it's 10 30 in the morning yeah you don't open your doors until when today uh 12 30 so not for two more hours yeah so it's i'm i'm smelling last night's popcorn yeah and it smells great well, that's, peop that's why people love me. I smell like popcorn. <laughs> Vista is owned by the same man who owns the Los Feliz 3. Yes. So the reason that we're talking to you today at the Los Feliz 3 is because the Vista is uh, changing hands. And um, there's some renovations going on there. So the owner was nice enough to offer you a job here at the Los Feliz 3. Is that yeah. the story? I mean, I I am a worker of his. For As a matter of fact, he was not my original boss. I used to have another boss. And uh, uh, Lance didn't take over the Vista until 1992. Okay, so since 1992, he's the one responsible to making the Vista what it is today. What's Lance's you last know, name? Lance Alspa. Okay. Yeah. So get, shout out Lance. Yeah, Lance. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Because... Um, what, what did he do in 1992 that was different than when you had started? He used to be a manager, you know, just but, like oh, me. What was different about the theater? What did he... Oh, improve? my God. Um, I don't want to say names, but the previous owner, he didn't really fix anything. You know, like the 
place was running down. I mean, you've been around the neighborhood. I don't know if you remember how uh, the yeah. Vista looked in, in 1988, but, sure. you know, things were falling apart. You know, the, the guy wouldn't even change a light bulb. You know, I think he had like financial problems or something. And uh, yeah, I remember when when they told me, hey, Victor, thanks for all your good service, but uh, the theater is actually going to close. And I was like, holy shit. But, you know, back then I was um, a teenager. So I was like, well, you know, I didn't even really rush to go find another job. And then I remember Lance calling me uh, like three months later. And it's like, hey are you still looking for a job? And, I, and I'm like, yeah, actually, I didn't even look for another one. Like, what's going on? He's like, well, I just purchased the theater and I need you back. And I was like, what? You? I said, wow, this is great. Because, you know, he used to be my manager. Right. And then the rest is history because uh, he, he started really working hard on uh, making the theater uh, go back. And he's the one that put gold to the heads at the vista because originally they used to be just um you know blank um cement heads these these are those cool like they almost look like angels that are inside the theater yeah i used to tell people it was the goddess of movies uh, watching you they are watching us yeah <laughs> i think i think it's soothing yeah I think it's nice. Yeah. And someday they'll repeat my face and they'll be all over. They'll repeat all the faces of the I, theater. Hey, no. I don't see I'm why kidding, they would no. wait. I'm kidding. They should do it now. So Lance was, was just a manager. Yes. Suddenly he's the owner of the Vista. Yes. And it sounds like he really loves movies. Oh, he's been doing this forever. I think, I don't want to speak for him, but I think he's close to doing this for 50 years. Wow. Yeah. Or, so or, when or a real more. movie owner or a real movie lover. Yes owns this very unique theater. Yeah. Um, the Vista was made in the 20s, right? 1923. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when, when he finally gets his hands on such a classic mm -hmm. theater, um, I guess what you're telling me is that's one reason we love it mm -hmm. is because we can feel, like you said with the popcorn, the we passion. can feel his passion. Yeah, and you know, uh, you should have, do an interview with him because he has such amazing stories. That guy practically has worked in every movie theater in Los Angeles. Really? He used to own El Rey Theater before it turned into a what? concert. He worked at the Chinese Theater. He has worked at the Dome. I mean, he's that. I mean, look, here you are praising me. There's bigger fish than me, believe me. They say things like, oh, I'm the face of the Vista and that. You know, I just consider myself a really good host. You know, I... Because I love uh, movies and I love people, uh, it's, it comes natural to me to just smile and greet them. And uh, I consider myself like a Liza Manelli with the cabaret, you know. You know how she sings that song about, come taste the wine, you know. So me, I'm like, come to the Vista, you know. What good is it to stay at home with your broom and your book and your knitting you know, come to the Vista, check out a movie, come taste the popcorn, come, come taste the, the, you know, the candy, and uh, you're going to have a good time. You know, let's make it a holiday, like she says. So, you know, hearing all these musicals, all these movies, all this stuff, uh, like Cinema Paradiso, you know, it just kind of made me who I am at the door. So people would compliment me and they say, wow, you know, you're such a great host and they used to say, yeah, you're the face of the Vista. But then when I added the costumes, yes. then it turned everything into Disneyland. What, do you remember your first costume that you wore for yes, a movie? Yes, it was, was the it? Phantom of the Opera on 2004. Some stories have so great a power that with each new generation, they are reborn. There's a feeling, a passion. But it had to come from somewhere. This was no phantom. Ghosts do not skin their victims. This is the work of an artist. We will make music that the world will love forever. Take the last step to me. You are the angel. You are my voice. So again, those of you who have not uh, experience this wonderful thing. 
if you go to a movie at the Vista, and it, I feel like it's usually the first week, maybe the first couple days of the run, um, you might see uh, Victor mm -hmm. dressed up as one of the characters or the star. And so you're saying you dressed up as the Phantom of the Opera. Well, after working there so many years, not getting bored, but I was like, you know, how, how could I challenge myself to step up, make it a little, you know, more exciting? And uh, I always had like an inside itch because I used to say things like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if someone like dressed up as, let's say, Spider-Man and he, he was here at the door and... So then one day I, I accidentally, I was walking in front of my favorite custom store. I, I, I don't know if they're still open, but it used to, it used to be called uh, Aussie Dots next oh, yeah. to Wacko's. On, 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 well, it used to be on Melrose. Yeah, but then they moved to uh, Hollywood next to Wacko's. Yeah. So Aussie Dots, um, you know, those guys uh, became my friends. And one day I was just passing by and I, I think it, it was... Uh, it was the destiny because I remember they had a Phantom of the Opera uh, uh, costume in the window display. And I'm like, wait a minute. I go, this looks really good. And I went in there and of course those guys are like, oh, it'll fit you perfectly. And, and then they sold me on it and suddenly I bought the costume. And then uh, the Phantom is like one of my favorite musicals from the 80s. And I was really excited about the movie. So I just... Um, I was nervous because um, I called my boss and I'm like, hey, you know, I said, OK, if maybe I have a little fun, you know, just the first weekend, like you said. And do you think it'll be OK for me to wear the, the, the costume? And at first he wasn't sure about it. He was like, mm, I don't know, Victor. OK, uh, we'll make it just like the opening weekend. Great. So then I did it. And man, the response was so unbelievable. He, that's when email first was like invented, I think. So I remember he got like hundreds of emails, people saying, we love that guy. Who's that guy? And can, is he going to do it next weekend? I want my mother to see him. I want my grandmother to see him and my kids. And then all of a sudden there was like, uh, and, I, and I didn't know because I was just innocently cutting tickets at the door. So he came to me and he's like, uh, do you think you can wear your costume one more uh, weekend? Because uh, people are like emailing and they, they really liked it. And he was shocked too that people liked it. So then once that run was over, that's when they were re-releasing the new Star Wars movies when they added that additional footage, right. you know? Yeah. And we were going to play it on film at the Vista and people were really excited. So all these customers were coming and they're like, oh, can we buy tickets for Star Wars? Sure, and is that guy gonna dress up again? And there, and now that was me, but usually at the box office, and I was like, uh, that guy, uh, uh, I'm not sure if he's gonna do it or not, but I will keep you posted. And then I went back to those guys and I said, hey, at Aussie Dots, I go, hey guys, um, do you guys have a Darth Vader? No, but we can order you one. And then they got all excited because now suddenly they have this customer that is at the Vista that could be a potential future sales. And he did. He turned out to be like years of uh, uh, business with them. But uh, yeah, I remember uh, I ended up, my second custom ever was Darth Vader for the, uh, the re-release of the Star Wars. And then that turned it into a bigger monster because... They wanted me to be there every day for every show, and I and I just did it, and and it was something new for me, you know. So it was, it, 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 and then it didn't stop. But the thing is that I didn't want people to think, oh, that crazy guy is there again. I don't want that. So what I did is that I kept it, I kept it limited, and I said to myself, uh, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it great. But if I don't feel it, if I feel like the movie is not that good or, or the costume did not come out that good, the last thing I wanted to be was a cheesy costume. So every time I did it, I make sure that it was excellent. And I only did it for like, you can say the best ones. And if I didn't like the movie or something like that, I didn't do it because at the end, people wanted me to dress up as Godzilla, the nun, they wanted to, all these crazy movies. And I'm like, you want me to dress up as a priest? I was like, uh, I don't know. Mm -mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So I, I you draw the line. So I just kept it balanced, and I didn't want to overdo it, you know. So I, I think I've done a good job. So it sounds like you buy all these costumes. You're not renting them. Well, the way it started, people always ask that. Oh, I want to make this clear. I'm so glad. People always ask me this. Oh, the studio sent you this costume. I'm like, lady, we're lucky they even sent us a fucking poster. <laughs> I said, no, this came out, out of my pocket. And, you know, and there's all those um, nerds, you know, hey, those are not really the official Star uh, Star Wars boots or whatever. Hey, dude, I take donations. If you can come up with a better one, give it to me. You know, I'll wear it. And they used to stay quiet, you know, because uh, people always like want to point out all the bad things you did, you know. Yeah. Some of these celebrities come to the Vista and uh, seen their movie at the Vista and, and then said hello to you? Look, I like being humble and I don't um, want to, you know, uh, exaggerate. But really, thanks to the Vista, I have practically met everyone. So they have come and, and All visited of them. you. Have they visited you while you were in their costume? Yes. Who? Well, I mean... Um, Let's just kind of focus on Quentin for a minute because okay. he's my buddy. All right. Uh, well, hold on. Is, oh. it okay? <laughs> Is it okay that we talk about Quentin? Because of course. It's been crazy during my whole career to see how the cinema experience is lessened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the yeah, viewer. Yeah. Like every five years, it's lessened by another big jump. However, I do think boutique cinemas will actually thrive mm. in this time. And I'm not talking about the lazy boy mm. order nachos and margaritas and, and uh, <laughs> six bean salad. Yes, exactly. And uh, <laughs> roast beef. I mean, actually, I like the Alamo Draft House a lot. I love the Alamo yeah, Draft House. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not really down with that whole lay. I'm like, I got a living room. I want to go to a movie theater. I don't want to recreate my living room mm. or in an outdoor place. I actually like feeling the audience, yes, <laughs> not, yes. not in my own little sofa. <laughs> but like, for instance, when we opened up the New Beverly about two weeks ago, in June, again, and like we've sold out every single show. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's promising. And I'll announce yeah, please. one thing here that people don't know yet. I bought the Vista. Oh, this my right here. God. Yeah. I love the Vista. Yeah. Oh, you did. Yeah, we're going to probably open it up around Christmas time. Yay. Oh, my God. That's fantastic and again, news. Only film. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. But oh. it won't be a revival house. Okay. It won't be a revival house. We'll show new movies mm -hmm. that come out where they give us a film print. Yeah. All right, we'll show new stuff. It's not going to be like the New Beverly. The New Beverly has its own vibe. Sure. The Vista is like a crown jewel mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. kind of thing. And so it'll be like the best prints. And so we'll show older films, but they'll be like older films that like you know, can hold a four-night engagement. Yeah. He's going to be he's going to be your boss soon. He's going to be Yeah, I'm you know, I'm so flattered. Because me and Quinton know each other way, way back when he was first starting. And uh, I remember one time he came in and um, I said, Quinton, one of these days, I'm hoping that I'll dress up for one of your movies. Uh, and he's like, yeah, man, uh, we'll figure out something, you know, because we will have uh, these amazing conversations, you know, when I will give him his popcorn and his coffee. <laughs> and uh, he will get so excited because uh, he he will come in to see uh, the Black Mask with Johnny Depp, and he also came to see uh, Public Enemies uh, two years right. earlier, I think. Uh, and you know, I would always give him his popcorn and his uh, coffee because that's what Quinton likes. And and you know, and I will get him all pumped up. You know, I would say he will come in and he say, Victor, how's the movie? And I say, you know. Johnny Dad is great, and you know, uh, this movie is awesome. But you know what is missing? What? He said, is missing that Quentin kick. You know, that, that Quentin, and he will get all excited. He's like, yeah, man, you know, they, I, I think he said something like, uh, yeah, they tried to get me to direct it. And I, I told him, if I can't change the script, man, I, I don't want to do it. You know, if, it's gonna, if, if they're going to give me the job, it's going to have to be my way. And, and he will get all excited. So we will have all these 
great conversations about movies. And then I was I will throw it in. I go, Quentin, I hope someday I get to dress up for one of your movies. Because you know, when he did Kill Bill, it was more like a female character and uh and the other movies they were not really like a kind of like a custom kind of thing, even though they're amazing. Yeah. So then the the day finally came when Quentin I uh, did the Inglorious Bastards, and I said, this is it. And I went out, got myself a classic soldier, and then, you know, I, I was able to borrow the actual, they're not real guns, but they're like good replicas of the same guns that uh, they have uh, in Glorious Bastards. So uh, I don't know how I was able to slap it together at the last minute, but there it was. Quinton came in. Um, uh, I was at the door, right, uh, cutting tickets with my custom, and then the employees are like, "Victor, Quinton is in line because he used to do that. You know, he used to buy his tickets for his own movie and line up with the audience, and he was like one of the first in line for his own movie. And I thought that was so cool. And uh, of course, I would offer him to come in, and he's like, "No, Victor, I'm staying here with the fans." I'm like, oh, "Okay, awesome." So you can imagine. I literally pee in my pants when Quinton comes in and he's like, cool, dude, cool. This is awesome. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. And I was just, yes, my master, I I did it all for you. I was like, I'm just so happy you got to see it. You know, finally the day came that I got to wear one of your costumes. That's beautiful. So uh, Reservoir Dogs, you yeah. dress up in a suit for Reservoir no, Dogs? No, because back then I was, Still kind of like very young and shy. And my costume didn't start until 2004. Oh. Yeah. So, because, you okay. know, you can say that I was shy, shy, shy. But then through the years, I got more confident, more confident. And then by 2004, that's when I say, okay, let's step it up. And um, I was daring enough, you can say, to do a costume. So you built this long relationship with Quentin. Yeah. And... um when did you first hear the rumors that he might want to buy the Vista? We're, well, let me ask you this. Did the rumors from the outside come first, or did Quentin tell you first that he was interested one day in owning the Vista? Well, I don't think it was more of a conversation. I think it was more of an intuition, because he will come in all the time to see movies, and I would tell him, I said, Quentin, you know you're my number one choice if something ever happened to the owner because, you know, once in a while, um, I've been there working for so long, you know, the owner, uh, he's like, Victor, I'm getting older. I don't know how long I'm going to really want to keep doing this. I mean, I love it. Uh, he would always say that, but, you know, he wasn't really, he didn't really mean it. Yeah. But, you know, we would talk about things like what would happen if there was an emergency where, you know, you know, nobody likes to talk about the, you know, but what if, you know, there like was an earthquake or something? Yeah. What if there was an earthquake? What if there, you know, uh, someone had an accident or someone fell ill? What was, and since I've been there for so long, uh, we had like, you could say, a backup plan of what to do in case of uh, emergencies, you know? So I would always turn it into fun and then I would go to Quinton and go, well, you know, Quinton, if, if the shit, if the fan ever, if the shit ever hits the fan, you know you're like my number one choice. I'll go look for you at the Beverly, at the new Beverly, and please save the Vista, you know, because if anyone should have it, it should be you. Now, now, I just always assumed that the new Beverly was enough for Quentin. Yeah. Because, I mean, he has done a beautiful job with that, mm -hmm. and he shows what it seems like are the yeah. types of films that he wants to show. Yeah. I would have thought that that was enough. No, dude. I mean, he deserves the dome. He deserves the Chinese. And I'm so flattered that he wanted the Vista. You know, it, you know, there's so many great theaters, you know. So when you love movies the way he does, you know, I, I, I mean, he, he deserves more. And there might be more, you know, you never know. Other celebrities have you met over there? Uh, well, you know, um, I'm very, I'm terrible with names, by the way. I, I am too. I, I remember faces, but 
you know, I'm like, oh, dude, uh, you're the guy from Star Trek, you know, and oh, you're the guy from, you know, the musical or uh, so um, I I met everyone. I mean, I met um, Elvira. Nice. She is so down to earth. I, she's one of the biggest supporter yeah. uh, of the Vista. Then I met uh, Liza Manelli. Really? I, she was she's like, I, I told her, you could have been at any theater in the world. Why are you here? She's like, well, I was in Hollywood, and you guys, I love your theater because I love the deco, but the part that is my favorite, she said, is that you always start the show with the song. Yes. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. I said, well, thank you for being here. And uh, The song she means is the commercial. Let's, let's all go. go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. <laughs> Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. The sparkling drinks are just dandy. The chocolate bars and the candy. So let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. And isn't that interesting that yeah. other theaters don't play that right. little clip? Man, people, customers notice everything, man. They used to, uh, like, again, you know, I was the channel. I was I was their Google at the door because anything they didn't like or anything they do like, they would tell me at the door. They were like, Victor, we love what you're doing or no, we don't like when you do this. So please, they're like, whatever you do, don't ever, ever take out the curtains. I'm like, yeah, dude, we're proud of our curtains. They're like, whatever you do, never, never take the space between the seats. Dude, you're first class. Let's talk yeah. about that space real quick. Yeah. Again, if you haven't been to the Vista, you need to you need to go when it reopens. Yeah. <laughs> because, um, I mean, we're close to 100 years of that movie theater now. And um, one reason that I love it it, and I'm not even that tall of a guy, but I can yeah. imagine really tall people truly love it yeah. because it seems like about halfway through the 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 seating, the, the yeah. rows, that you guys took out like every other row. Lance, what? the owner. Lance did this. The theater used to sit 720 people because in the 20s they used to build everything really tiny and uh, you know kind of tight. And Lance is like, you know what? We don't need all these seats, you know? Let's remove every other road and make it nice and comfy and more modern. And that was one of the greatest things he ever did because he, see, Lance, he has done you know well in life. So it was not about money. It was about quality. So instead of quantity, he went for quality. So which, he which removed- Which is such a genius and unusual yeah. thing. It's a luxury in California because land is very expensive. So, right. to uh, if you if I'm a designer and I go to let's say to one of those chain movie theaters and I say, oh, I'm gonna have I'm gonna copy the Vista and do every they would they, it would get declined so fast because land is so expensive. They're like, are you kidding? You're telling us to skip all this land for seating, you know? And they don't think about the customers. See, that's, that's the right. problem with these big corporations. Well, but also on on. Because you show first run movies. Yes, like and that's what Squinton's gonna movies. do is only show first run movies. And uh, at the Vista. And, and so for the new Star Wars, for example, yes. when, when, whenever those come out, yeah, you're losing hundreds of dollars every screening by mm. not having those rows of seats. But we're not about money, dude. We're, we're about passion, and we're about exhibiting movies the the vintage classic way. And that's what we uh, that's what we strive for. Uh, people used to come up to me, Victor. I love that you guys play all these classic soundtracks during the intermission, and that's because we refuse to play slides and commercials yes. on the screen. You know, we, we want it to be as professional as possible. You know, and 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 now when you go to theaters, they don't even want to give you curtains. Right. They, you have this naked uh, box room. Uh, you know, and you know, even here at Los Feliz, we got yeah. nice curtains. There's so much legroom. Yeah, <laughs> that that the the guy at the end of the row can get up and walk in front of the entire row mm -hmm. and not even come close to touching you. 
-hmm. He can go get his popcorn, go to the bathroom, whatever he's got to do, come back, and it's no big deal. I know. And and for, well, big dudes like us love it because we don't bother anyone going to the restroom. Nobody's world. bothered. But but also it's it's in a town of movie theaters. Yeah, there are, you said it right. There are so many great movie theaters There's in so LA. Many. Yes, there's nothing like that experience. Nope. Where you can get up in the middle, you can show up late. Yeah, and not disturb anybody really. Yeah. Um, and the handicapped love it because every road is like the best seat for them. Where where they go to another theater, they are thrown to the corner to the left far side where you're in an angle watching the movie and and handicapped wheelchairs they 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 can sit anywhere i used to tell them where do you want to sit and they're like they couldn't believe that the whole room was a whole choice for them <laughs> you know and they would tell me that too please don't ever change that i'm like no of course not we're not going to change it one other thing that that i loved about i guess i'm giving credit to lance got yes. again a second shout out to lance yes is your matinee prices were fantastic. Again, because Lance was not into money and stuff, he wanted to keep the lowest price because he knows the classic ways when the, he knows people's mentality. There's nothing better than a cheap movie, a, a good cheap movie, yeah. because that gives you money, extra money for popcorn. And, he's, he's and our money. money, our money comes from popcorn. So why are you gonna give all this extra money to the film companies, you know, where the our money comes from popcorn? So you know, keep the the popcorn man, uh, prices low too. But if people have extra money for popcorn and they have kids and stuff, you know, it turns into a whole and family you know, thing. It, it totally worked because I gotta tell you, one of those Star Wars movies that I saw not that long ago on film, right? I I, yes. I imagine yeah yeah JJ uh, went to a lot of trouble the director JJ Abrams Abrams yeah he went through a lot of trouble fighting Disney to get a print yeah. and if anyone can do it is him and Quentin right <laughs> so, and so when the arc light was was down the street yeah um they were charging fifteen dollars for that movie yeah but if you could somehow figure out a way to get to the Vista by mm -hmm. six o'clock. Yeah. You could see the same movie yeah. with this great row in yeah. front of you of nothing. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's in your way for six dollars. And and my costume. And we I got to see you as, as Darth Vader. And um I mean that's a that's a way better experience. Thank you. Right? Well, as a manager, you're making my toes curl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because you know, I'm a manager. I take it very personally. And um uh, my job was to hear nothing but praise. And yeah. uh, when people left, they were just so happy. And as a manager, I'm like, well, I guess I, I did my job. You guys show private screenings sometimes. Yes. You show midnight movies sometimes. Yes. Are you there for those also? Of course. So some days you'll work 14 hours, 15 hours? I'm used to 16 hours a day shifts. You know, wow. let me tell you one thing. As a Guatemalan, uh, I love my country, and you know, but I, you know, I came in at young age here when I was fourteen, and all I want to tell you is that it's a lie when people say that there's no opportunity in America because I barely spoke English. I, I didn't have papers until I was, I think, uh, twenty, uh, twenty-seven. And, you know, I did a lot of things. I mean, by the time I got papers, I had already owned my own printing shop business, you know, and I worked really hard to the point where now I own my own home. I, I you know, do very well financially. And I, it's because, you know, I work my ass off, you know, and when you work hard, you get far in America. I'm gonna give you a good example. I was I will be standing at the vista uh, with my custom at the door, and people are like, "Victor, why are you so happy?" And I'm like, "Because I love my job." And they're like, "Dude, I'm an actor, and I've been struggling for years to make it through the business, and you're not even an actor, and you have your own poster. <laughs> and and how come I don't?" 
I'm like, well, your first mistake, I go, you don't work in a movie theater. And then two, if you want to make it in the business, you have to work hard. And let me tell you this saying, if you hang out with barbers, you'll end up with a haircut. And that's what happened to me. I started hanging out with, with actors and directors, and look, here I am, getting ready to work with Quentin. And I met everyone. So any actor out there that's saying, oh, you know, there's no opportunity in America, it's a lie because you're just not doing the right things because if you work hard, my brother is a construction worker, and he works his ass off, and he's gotten really far. Uh, so, you know, it, 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 I guess it just kind of runs in the family because my sister was also uh, a, 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 you know immigrant, and now she's a psychiatrist. She's a doctor in psychiatry. So I think it just comes in how you look at things and how hard you're willing to work for something. Here we are at the Los Feliz 3. Yeah. And this is an interesting theater because, <laughs> well, first of all, it's much smaller theaters. Um, but what I love about it is you, you play more foreign films, more independent films here. Okay. One more for Lance. Yes. We will, we will have private meetings here at Los Feliz during the pandemic, we were like crying. You couldn't smell the popcorn because it had been turned off for so long. Yeah. So, you know, I, I was, uh, we, we would have meetings and like, okay, what's our plan to reopen the theaters? And we're like, well, Quinton's getting the vista, so the vista's safe. So Los Feliz, what do we do with Los Feliz? And we're like, bingo, let's invite our buddies from Cinematech to come to the Los Feliz. Why? Because they love film just as much as we do, and Quinton loves film. So we went up to them and said, hey, would you be willing to come to Los Files? And they were like shocked that we wanted them, and here they are showing these amazing 35-millimeter uh, prints, and the variety is amazing. If we were open right now, if we would have opened Los Files with regular films, the theater probably would have reclosed again because the movies that are out right now are so bad that you know it, they, they just, it just wouldn't add up to keeping the theater open. But yeah. it's amazing talking about passion. All these people are coming here because they love all these classic films. Yeah. And they love them because they're good. And they also come in because we're giving them something different. You know, right now we're competing with streaming and we're competing with digital. And now we're back to our roots, giving them film. We're educating the audience. We're, you know, bringing back the roots of our, you know, uh, passion here, you know. What were you showing last night in the big theater? Oh, it was called The Seed. The Seed. Yeah. This is this is a, a scary movie. Yeah, right now the Cinematheque is having a festival over these horror films and... Uh, a lot of these movies haven't even ever been shown. It's like their premieres. So yeah, yesterday was a madhouse here with people, and that's why they require the vaccination card oh. because you know it's it, it is it was crazy. I mean, the line was around the corner. I did see that line, and that was just a standby line. Uh, people hoping that someone didn't show up to uh, yeah. So. You know, and this is this is what surprised me about working at the academy. Yeah. I never knew that people who were like crazy about movies. Yeah. Horror movies are their favorite movies. We love it all, man. Do you feel the same way? I I love everything. I love musicals, I love high action, romantic, I mean, but yeah, scary movies have their own little spot and yes, they do have cults following them yeah. that you know, like uh, follow them religiously. Yeah. So yeah, it's a good market. Which I just thought was ironic because to me, I was like, these are the worst movies, and they're like, mm -mm. no, they're no, not. No, I don't agree with that either. Right. Yeah. So the seed was sold out. It was. Uh, it was not only was it sold out, but there was a giant line uh, around the corner hoping for cancellation tickets to 
because you know if people don't show up because what we do is uh we we email them and then they confirm that they are coming but the computer doesn't uh, click it in until they come here physically to scan their phone so then we know that they're here so at the by by showtime we can tell that let's say 10 people didn't show up and then we go to that line and say you can 10 of you can go in you know and right. then we sell them the ticket yeah um the uh, so this is American Cinematique. I mean, I, I think it's American Cinema Tech. Cinema but, Tech. Yeah. Well, you would know better than me. No, I don't. <laughs> I'm usually asleep at this hour. Yeah. So, um, they do they provide the film? Uh, well, as as a matter of fact, um, they were telling me that Quentin lent them three of his prints <laughs> because he was so excited about them showing film and and they needed some uh, movies and he lent them three of the. They're prints. He's got a huge collection somewhere. He, he's got a giant warehouse. I think he has one in Glendale, and I forgot where the other one is. The reason that we're doing this interview today yeah. is uh, the Los Feliz 3 did not have a marquee for a long time. Yes. It it just had America's, uh, those, America's Cinema Tech. tech. Oh, uh, during the pandemic, we had movie quotes. Right. You had movie quotes. Yes. And then once you opened, though... It was just yellow out there. Yeah, because Cinematech, we invited them to come in. Because Cinematech, right. Yeah. And so and so I was walking down the street and I noticed that you had marquees back. Yeah. When we at first it was just Cinematech. Right. But then they they did so well. We didn't know, right? We didn't know how people, the audience, we didn't know how ready they were to see movies. But it turned out that they were really ready. <laughs> So then that inspired Lance, uh, maybe we should start playing regular movies because while Cinematep was going, these cinemas were turned off. Mm. So then, then he's like, you know what, maybe it is time to open the... And we did. And it, it's been slow, but little by little we're noticing that week by week the audience is, is starting to, to come back to the regular movies. And so I, I was walking by... Because what I'll do, yeah, this is my little routine. I'll do these interviews. Yeah, I send it over to Jordan, my uh, my partner. Yeah, he, and so what I'll do after he edits it, he'll give it back to me, and then I'll walk around the neighborhood for about an hour and I'll listen to it on my ear pods. So I was walking around Los Feliz, yeah, and I was looking at the marquee. Yes, and you came running out <laughs> with your mask on, and you were like. All you have to do is scan the QR code. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, I don't want to scan the QR yeah. code. I want to see this beautiful marquee up here. Yeah. And and you're like, but that's all you got to do. And I, and I, I was like, Victor? Yeah. Is that you? <laughs> and you were like, do you know me? I was like, everybody knows you. <laughs> so even through your mask, I could tell that it was you. Thank you. But part of it was your passion, Victor. What I'm manager- a natural. At nine o'clock at night, yeah. What manager's gonna run out, yeah, and grab customers from the sidewalk? Only you. Well, that's why they call me the epic manager. Are you allowed to talk about when the Vista will reopen? Ah, uh, yeah. When will it reopen? As soon as possible. Ah! <laughs> no, really. Um, uh, Quinton told people that the Vista was going to open in December, but he didn't say which December. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, remodeling takes time. And, you, dude, you can't imagine. He's got the best people working for him. Well, hold on, though. Yeah. I don't want anything touched. No. Don't worry, he's not gonna touch anything in the auditorium. Okay. He, but you know, the restrooms were screaming for remodeling. I don't even remember. Yeah, see, because you're so cool, that's why. But no, really, uh, honestly, me being in the building for so many years. You know what needs to get fixed. I know the little spots that need to be fixed, uh, the little secret things that need to be fixed. <laughs> And he knows, I told him all about it. You made a list. I'm, there was a giant list. And, and unlike the first boss that you ever had here who didn't want to fix anything, <laughs> yeah. Quentin actually 
paid attention to your list. Yeah. So yeah. if anybody knows, you know. Yeah. So Quentin's really going to take his time. He is. Sure. Well, first of all, because of COVID, you know, his people are saying, why are you rushing? Oh. You know, why are you rushing? It's like, you don't you don't have to. You know, and the, the, the dude is busy. You know, he's promoting his books, you know, yeah. going to different countries to... You, you can imagine podcasts. He's uh, got a, a, a family now. He's got a family, you know. So I think right now um, uh, this is stuff that people don't know. You know, people uh, used to live in the 70s at the Vista. They used to have uh, um, apartments there, you know. Right, right. But when Lance took over, he didn't want nobody living there. So all those rooms were empty forever really and the customers never saw them because those are private office uh on the second floor at the vista so lance owned that whole building the whole building did he own the the bar too no 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 we're, that no that's a different building You're, that's a separate the building. good the good luck but the good luck bar building is a separate building okay yeah we're talking about the vista and the two front stores okay yeah so those were abandoned offices the whole time they've been empty for years as long as i can remember people that, used to live in those apartments that blows my mind yeah in the 60s and the 70s so if i was if i was if i was working for you yeah i would have maybe smoked a little weed up there <laughs> uh people they did more more than <laughs> than weed up there so the the little uh the little i i want to say there was ice cream that was sold next yeah, door yes yeah, they didn't make it because of the COVID again. So, but but that's available to Quentin now. Yeah, those are all his. Do you know what his plans are for that? Our, originally, uh, they mentioned something that one store was going to be Quentin's shop where you can, you know, buy DVDs and posters. Oh. And uh, for years, people used to pull my ears and say, well, you got to sell... Uh, um, uh, Vista memorabilia, you know, yeah. they, they wanted to buy like, let's say a Vista t-shirt and a right. Vista mug. So for me, that's a great idea because you got tourists coming from all over the world. And now that they, they know that Quinton owns it, you know, now they have a little shop where they can buy, um, um, you, you know, memorabilia. And now it's going to be Vista memorabilia and Quinton memorabilia. So I think it's awesome. Great. Then he was like, man, what do I do with the other store? And originally people were like, well, the good luck bar closed. So why don't you, you know, serve liquor? And he was like, mm, yeah, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. You know, so at the end, I don't know if he's going to end up being a coffee store again. Ah. He could end up being a, a, a bar. And uh, as for now, they haven't made it official. But um, like I said, don't worry. The Vista is in good hands because um, the work that they're doing is mostly internal. Right. The projection room, even though it's kind of, uh, I think, painful to touch it, it really needs to be upgraded because we're talking about the 1920s projection room, you know, and Quinton is going to make it a spaceship of a he's gonna put 70 millimeter in there which is a new chapter in my career because i have never operated 70 millimeter so i am like so excited i, I i'm gonna be going to quinton school man like projection <laughs> school you know so has, has he announced this already of course yeah okay so we're not we're not uh no we're not screwing up anything there's, there's no secrets here so there's going to be 70 millimeter, 70 millimeter at the Vista. Brand new prints. He's going to go to every single studio personally and say, are you in or are you out? Are you going to give me film? Because that's if you don't want to give me film, then you're out. You know, and only someone powerful like him can go. If I went to Paramount and demanded film, they would call security and take me to the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> No, they wouldn't. They would say, Victor, anything you want. (laughs) 
And it's so great that 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 we talked about Cinema in Paradiso. Yes, Cinema Paradiso because, is my favorite movie. Because that movie, that's your favorite movie. That's my favorite movie of all time. Oh. I mean, you know, I love every movie that comes out. Yeah. But Cinema Paradiso is special to me because it's the first movie that I got to work at the Vista, yeah. and also because uh, is is the story of a kid that wants to be a projectionist. I mean, I was not a kid. I was 18 when I started working, but I had the same curiosity, and eventually I learned how to do it and became the projectionist, and look, here I am getting ready to work for Quentin. But uh, he also shows the struggles of a projectionist. You know, That's right. There's a scene where the guy is like 105 fever, but he still showed up to work, and he still played the movie and did not let the audience down, yeah. and then there was a fire, and then there was a war, and in and, and in, uh, in all those things connect to my life. So I'm thinking, God, this is so ironic that that you know. But the reason I bring it up again, that movie's not the same if they're showing digital. I know, <laughs> I know, right? No, and and I don't agree with the movie either because there's a scene where they blow up the movie theater, and I that's my least favorite scene. I'm like, if that would have been me. Or Quinton, we would never ever let them blow up that theater. Yes, you know. So that's the only scene I don't agree. Uh, do you have any tips for people who visit the Los Feliz Three? Is there a a better time to come here when it's less crowded? Is there a Whoa. theater that they should pay attention to? I don't want to sound like a commercial, but the best thing would be to become a member because another reason I love Cinema Tech is because. All the work they do is non-profit. It's a charitable company. They protect film. They educate the audience. And if you only buy one little ticket, that's tax deductible. And if you buy a membership, it's tax deductible. How much is a membership? Uh, it, it starts, I think, $189 for the first level. And, when, and what do you get for They that? have four levels. What, what do you get if, you, you, if you're a member? Do you, you, to go to the movies for you free? get you get priority seating, oh. so you get you you go to go in first, Aha. and they email you to tell you that there's a special event coming, especially if there's a director or a Q and A going on with the actors. They let you know first, and then once the let's say let's say the members only sold half of the tickets, then the other half gets released to the other. So if you're a member, you're covered. Yeah. So you definitely become a member. Which, which, and these, tax deductible be, because, <laughs> because these theaters are so tiny. Yeah, you almost well, have to be a, a member. Well, again, they're only using Cinema One. Cinema One is the big screen dedicated to film, right? And that's the only one for Cinema Tech. The other, uh, the other smaller screens are for the regular movies. I see. Yeah, Victor, you're you're a, a treasure of Los Feliz. You're a treasure of L.A. Thank you. We're very happy to have you. We're lucky to have you. Uh, for people who want to uh, return to the Vista, it sounds like it's not going to happen this year. Right. And it might not even happen next year. And if it does, it'll be the end of next year. Right. But we don't know. And we don't care because what's happening there is they're really taking care of it. Thank you. Well, I don't consider myself a treasure because without the audience, I'm nothing, right? So it's the audience really that that keeps this um, uh, alive, you know. So uh, I personally want to thank you for acknowledging my position, and I'm, you know, because the 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 part that touched me the most about your compliments that you said I ran out of the theater to greet you, and that really means a lot to me that you recognize that extra little effort is something so small that people overlooked in businesses you know a lot of restaurants close because they don't understand they're like why did we close why didn't business work it's because they don't have a front person running out greeting the customers That's you right. know so all these other people that have given me compliments in the past you know like quinton they all notice those tiny little things but nobody is more observative than the audience. So without the audience, let me tell you, if you don't pay attention to what they're telling you or asking you, that's when you start degrading. 
Thank you so much, Victor. Thank you. How great was Victor? You know who else sparks joy every time we think of them? Our Patreons, who are... We love you too, Tony. When you stoke us, you're saying, Tony, Jordan, have a box of Junior Mints. Take in that movie when it's not a bag bargain matinee. Buy that extra accessory to your costume. Every buck that you hand over helps us keep this insane project rolling. So shout out to our Patreons, Nancy Rommelman, Ali Miller, Sean Atlow, Matt Mills, Sean Wallace, Greg and Molly, Jamie Taylor, Mark Johnson, Kira Ann, Barney Grinky, Ben Welsh, and Henry Furman. Want to hear your name at the end of next week's show? Go to patreon.com slash here in LA and give till it hurts. Also, shout out to our Angelinos. To be an Angelino, all you have to do is pay Palace 25 bucks or more, and we will list you on the Here in LA website forever. You will also be given a number to denote how early you got in to make this dream come alive. For example, Angelino number one is Allie Miller. Two is George Wright. Three, Rita Joanne. Four, Jason Sutter. Five, Grant Houghton. And number six, Rob Baker. Just, just PayPal us your hard-earned cash to busblog at gmail.com. Want to support us but you're broke? No problem. You can still help. Just post your favorite episode to your Facebook. Easy peasy. Tweet something nice about us. Tell your friends. Make your own billboard. Tell them how Here in LA is spelled and it's on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and Google. Here in LA is produced by myself, Tony Pierce, and Darth Nihilus himself, Jordan Katz. Editing, mixing, and music supervision by Jordan Katz. Songs by Orgon and Jordan Katz. Special thanks to Cindy for creating the logo, Jenna Adams for inspiring me, and for Mr. Quentin Tarantino for buying my favorite movie theater and also writing a hell of a book to a company once upon a time in Hollywood. Holy mackerel. Call your shot! shot.